Today is uh, Tuesday, January the 13th, 2004. This is Sylvia Kirschman interviewing Yetta Weinstein Aaron at her home in Ottawa at 1500 Riverside Drive, apartment 104. Um, we're here to talk to Yetta about what it was like living in Lithuania first, then coming to Canada and growing up in Ottawa. Yetta, when did your first family first come to Ottawa? Well, my father came in 1929, right? Mm-hmm. And, and we came in 1932. I see. And why did he come? Well, my father was anxious to leave leave Lithuania because it was hard to make a, a living there. It was very primitive and there was very low food, much turmo uh, turmoil and pro pogroms. Uh, the Jews certainly were not favored. There were many in the family and, and a little hope of being able to continue or to have a better life. In 1925, uh, my father's uncle uh, Bernard Press, who lived in Worcester, Massachusetts, came to visit us. Uh, my grandmother's brother and um, came to visit. Uh, my grandmother uh, lived in Kamai, Lithuania. He came with an entourage of a chauffeur and uh, he was very wealthy in Boston, Massachusetts. He owned property there. And in those days, he was already a, a self-made man. Uh, I think you mentioned that he came with a chauffeur. Uh, well, uh, he, he came with a chauffeured car, mm -hmm. and uh, he, he was uh, he had very a well. He had was a limousine, you know, and yeah, he, he brought and other members of his family with him at the same time. Is that yes, right? he brought his mother. I mean, his uh, uh, wife, and they had uh, they had three children: two daughters and a son and they brought the two daughters with. I don't think the son was with them. And uh, everyone was impressed by his wealth in the Golden Medina, like, like in the rich land of America. Uh, he tried to uh, persuade his, my grandmother, his sister, to come to America, but she refused uh, to leave uh, 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 Kamai. Her husband, uh, Charles Weinstein, my grandfather, had gone to America twice and he came back he, because he said they were all heathens there. He didn't find uh, it was kosher enough, uh, it, was it wasn't yeah, religious right. enough? He, uh, absolutely not. Uh -huh. He felt that Jews, yeah, they were all, the Jews in America were irreligious. They did not follow the customs of the Jewish people with uh, rigor. Uh, the family in Russia were extremely devout Jews, and uh, you know the, that's the way we were raised. And your father was a son of Charles, right? My uh, uh, my father, uh, my grandfather's name was Charles, and my father was the oldest son, and he was born uh, in September of, of 1897 in Kamai. Yeah, Rakhine. Yeah, well, it was in Kamai was also born, because Rakasik was another uh, shtetl away. Uh, his father was a butcher, and my father followed in his footsteps, and uh, uh, they eked out a living, but we, we were never in want of food or uh, clothes or anything like that. We weren't that poor. So uh, our uncle from uh, Massachusetts advised them, uh, arranged that they could come, to, uh, that he would um, make papers so that my father and his family could migrate to, uh, uh, to Canada. Uh -huh. But my uh, grandfather and grandmother, they wouldn't uh, leave. Uh, he came to, came, uh, my father and uh, the family, my father came in 1929 and then he uh, uh, sent for us, his wife and, f and uh, four children, and we came in 1932, I said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And your mother's yeah. name was? Uh, oh, and yeah, uh, she, uh, my mother's name was Abramsky, A-B-R-A-M-C-K-Y. And we came here in, they had four, we, 
the, the four of us in 1920. So my sister was born January the 5th, 21. I was born in 23. Um, Percy of Shalom was born in 24. And Maxie was born in 28. Uh -huh. None of us could speak a word of English. In June 1932, just before the rise of the Nazis, we um, uh, we left Kamai and we went. Uh, we uh, made the journey by train to Kovna in Lithuania, and then to Germany ha in Hamburg, Germany, where we boarded the liner, uh, the Canard Line, Duchess of Bedford, and crossed the Atlantic to Quebec City. We so were yes. separate. You were separated from your family. My family, family yes, yeah, from 29 to 32, four years. My mother was a, a very na a gentle natured woman, and uh, she really never did uh, uh, recover from the trauma of leaving her family in the old country I see. and having to make a new life here. Uh -huh. uh, now, I think you had a uh, your, you had an uncle? Yeah. Who also uh, well, came? my father's brother, he was the youngest one and the youngest brother. They had another daughter that stayed in Kamai. And uh, he, when, uh, un the uncle from Worcester, when he saw this young man, uh, his nephew, who was at that time about 14, 15, how very clever he was, he promised that if he would go to medical school, he would support. Him. Oh, that so, was beautiful. Yeah. So, uh, my uncle had already graduated from Yeshiva before he went to, uh, so he applied and he was accepted at every university he applied to for this he told me many years later, he applied to uh, four universities and they all accepted him. And he chose uh, the one in Bern, Switzerland. Oh my. Uh, there was another university that was very uh, prestigious and uh, they did, just didn't take anybody and he, but anyway, he wound up there. And then he, he was able to come to Canada also because you're between your father and well, the other I, my, uncle. My, my father, my father brought him down. Uh, uh, well, what happened actually was the crash of 1929 mm -hmm. stopped my uncle Press in Worcester from being able to support him. He told him that he couldn't l uh, pay his way until he finished at school. But there was a professor, this he told me years later, there was a professor that when he came to tell him he, would, he was leaving school, the professor said, no way, you're staying and I'm paying for it. Many, many, I don't know if I should tell him this, yes. but anyway, many, many years later, they went to the hot springs in California mm -hmm. with his wife. By that time, he was uh, an established doctor in Toronto. And they went to uh, the, for a holiday. And what do you think? He met that professor in hot springs. Oh, my. From the university, the professor that supported him. The one in, from Switzerland. Uh, from, yeah, from the university. Up for it, and he met him. He told me this story. I got goose flesh, goose sprinkles. Uh -huh. I couldn't believe it because my father couldn't afford to finish him, uh, like to send him. And at that point in time, the war was already almost, the, well, the Nazis were all over the place. But many years later, that's, and that's how he graduated. So he finished uh, medical school and they came to Ottawa. My father brought him over. And he was going to stay in Ottawa, but to him it was a heck down. You know, like he was a cosmopolitan man who had traveled all over Europe and all over the place. So he decided to try his exams into a, for medical school at Toronto and a few more, and he was accepted at Toronto University, uh, at Toronto Hospital, and that's where he remained. Well, that's a very interesting story. Couldn't hard, believe it. Hard to believe yeah. you could have he's such a, an I I adventure. Oh, yeah. He's still, he's uh, 94. I think he's, he's, gonna be, he he's living. Isn't he's that, still, isn't yeah. that something? Yeah. Sure. I mean, in fact, uh, when I went to Stratford this summer, and my children go and visit him all the time because Wayne lives there, and uh, I had a very special relationship with him. 
I was more like his family, and I adored him, and he was very good to me. Even to this day, he calls me a very special name. <laughs> it's true. Not nice. uh, he, he, now, uh, you, you came when you were six, and not everybody uh, had that happen. What were your feelings like when you came here? Well, you know what, Sylvia, to tell you the truth, like, you were, first of all, I, I was devastated that I had to leave my grandparents and my aunts and uncles and family, you know. But I, I didn't take it, like, I just followed the rule. Whatever my mother said, this is them and our parents, and this is what she told us, that we're going to see our father. So well, you, even at six or seven years of age, you're not going to fight City Hall and start up for, you know, mm -hmm. kinds of stuff. And uh, we were actually, we were, I was really quite happy to know that I'm leaving Kamai because even as a child, you know, the, the other children who weren't Jewish would chase us and throw stones at us, mm -hmm. you know, like kids yes, do, which I'm sure they do it all over the world, but it was just the fear. Yes. And I, you were, like, you figured you're running away from the fear. I see. So mm -hmm. that you're hoping once you get by in where you're going, and especially to have your father there, and my mother was a very gentle woman, and for her it was a terrible journey to have to schlep for four kids, uh, little kids, because Maxie was just a baby and a mm -hmm. little bit. I think he was already walking. Yes. I'm not sure, but I think he was. Mm -hmm. So it was really hard on her. There was no, uh, you know, no doubt about it, but she never complained. And uh, I can remember <laughs> driving through Hamburg on the train, and it was pouring rain, and it was cold and miserable. But look, when you're young and you have a parent with you, you don't think of the, the uh, you know, the things that could happen or anything. You just follow the rules, and that's yes, it. Yes. Yes. And and did you know English when you came? No. No, we spoke a word of English. I said we spoke. Uh, first of all, we spoke Yiddish fluently. We spoke Hebrew fluently. We spoke uh, German, Lithuanian, and I think that was it. Maybe one more language, but uh, languages in, in those days, everybody spoke more than one language because the borders were all close by. Mm -hmm. uh, but mostly you had to speak the same as here. You spoke your, uh, my, uh, your uh, what is it, your mother's uh, language or your Mother mama Russian. Yes. Uh, and you follow, and then you spoke English or French or whatever yes. else, mm -hmm. same thing. Mm -hmm. then, but you know, when you're a child, you're not even uh, conscious of all that. But it, it, you did find it was quite an adjustment. <laughs> and how, but the good part is, when you're young like that, you know what happens, Sylvia? Like you just fall into it, mm -hmm. when you, you follow yes. it. The sad part is that you lose the other languages, I which see. I did. Uh -huh. I had, like I spoke, we spoke German, we spoke you know, and it didn't take very long. I couldn't even say the words. <laughs> it's true, because exactly. you were so anxious to uh, Americanize yourself. Yes. And you didn't want to be called the greener. <laughs> you remember those, that yes, saying? Yes, yes, yes. Well, that's why. <laughs> A greener kazina. <laughs> yeah, sure, we were green. And, and I remember that you lived at 433 St. Right. Patrick Street, yeah. beside Buckingham Dairy, right. near the corner of McGee Street. Right. Uh, what were some of the organizations you yeah, joined? Well, in those days, mind you, in the old country we already had uh, young Judea, like in our little group of friends. Uh, yeah, and I did the same thing here, and then uh, I think a couple of years later I uh, joined B'nai B'rith, uh, and uh, life went, you're growing, uh, you're growing, but you don't really know, like, you're following a pattern. That's yes. all you know. Uh -huh. You you know you can't just up and do whatever the heck you want. So did did you go to York Street School? I sure did. Uh -huh. I went to York Street School, and my teacher was Miss Leviton. Mm -hmm. Remember her? Yes, I do. And she was a doll. She really took us under her wings, and she realized that we were foreign, like you know, Greena, and she treated us lovely. And her aunt lived right next door to us. Mm -hmm. okay, that was the same family. I have pictures. Yes. I, did I give them to you? You gave me two pictures yeah. of uh, one in grade one, right, and, and one in grade eight. That's yes, right. and I'll be giving them with your with this oh, I uh, see. tape. Yeah. 
to the we archives, yes. Because she is in that picture, yes, yes in Grave Wounded. Oliver, Oliver, Barbara Lerner, remember mm -hmm. her? Yes. We were all, well, you weren't in my class. No, were I was too young. No. <laughs> you were too young. And uh, look, you know, life goes, <laughs> when you're young, you don't realize if, if it would have been where we were teen, like, you know, in our teens, I, in one way, we would have, uh, uh, I think we would have uh, been better off because we would have had more understanding of all the things that were taking place. But because we migrated in the, in the, in, in the early years, and once we came here, we acclimatized because, you didn't, as I said, you didn't want to be called a arena and you didn't want to be uh, ostracized right. in different ways. So, so you wanted to assimilate uh, as quickly absolutely. as possible. Yeah. As but, as not, but not, I, we, I, we still had the strong feeling that you couldn't assimilate with non-Jews. Oh, yes. Yes. That that like it's a permanent thing. Mm -hmm. and yes. There would be no way that, but it w there were a lot of people that, uh, it, it, we, that in Canada they were nice to us, but in the old country, especially with the Nazis coming, it was a different si uh, different uh, situation. And, and your what did your father do here in Canada? He came. Uh, uh, he was a butcher in the old country, mm -hmm. and he became a butcher here. And uh, he had, he became a poultry butcher eventually, and then they became, uh, 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 once he took in, once uh, my brothers went into the business, then they became uh, wholesalers. I think you you have a little story about your brother, your, how your oldest brother got into the business. Well, well he got into the business because his father forced him to. And I was pretty upset because Percy, of may rest in peace, was a very good student. And we were at this high school of commerce, and he would have, he could have chosen to be whatever he wanted to be, and my father took him out of school, and I was livid because I felt that that was not. First of all, I don't think Percy wanted it. Second of all, he was too, uh, he, he was too smart, you know, to go into that. But on the other hand, in those days, people, business people, were held in high esteem. Yes. If they were making a living and doing well. Yes. And consequently, and my father, I guess, needed him mm -hmm. in the business. Yes. So he took him out. But I was, I was very angry about it. And uh, I was a daughter. And, uh, you know, in those days, <laughs> the parents didn't think too much of me. <laughs> my Uncle Ralph used to tell a story. As a matter of fact, when I think of it, he told me. <laughs> that they kept me a secret for two weeks. They wouldn't <laughs> tell anybody that I was, that th my mother had another girl. <laughs> and just that. out of that, <laughs> he told me that. He <laughs> said that nobody knew that she had another girl because they didn't dare tell her. Big secret. It was a you big are a big secret. <laughs> yeah. Because it was a shame. <laughs> Why? To them, a girl. Well, well now what do we need another girl for? We need a fella. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Oh, he's a dollar um, um, <laughs> to this day. Yes. I mean, well, I, I had, I had, I can recall that in the 30s, uh, children were usually required to attend school till 16. Right. But uh, if parents really required them to help keep the family right. going economically, yeah. the, they, yeah. if, if the parent requested it, they could have permission to take a child yeah. out of school yeah. anywhere between 14 and 16. Yeah, so I right. guess that's what happened to yes, your brother. That's exactly what happened mm -hmm. to him. Yes. He was uh, younger than I was. And with me, I, I went at, at Commerce till grade uh, 13, not 13, uh, uh, three years. And I was going to go into the fourth year, but the war was on. And I applied, and I went to work for the Department of Transport. Oh boy! On uh, in the you know in the building on um, Metcalf. Yes. At uh, Metcalf and Laurier. Yes. What was the name of that building? The Hunter Building. Oh yes, yes. And yes. I worked for yes. the um, uh, uh, Department of. Um, it was the war years. Mm-hmm. Uh, by that time, I was I guess about age seventeen, eighteen. And I want to tell you something. I got my, my education there. First of all, it was a uh, the job was like a, you, you had to be a moron not to be able to do the job. But what happened there? 
the war was on and I applied and they put me into a, a department of transport and in that department there was my boss was Mr. Walker, a lovely gentleman. I, I, I still, and there was a man by the name of Mr. Lefebvre. I can see his face now. And I didn't know from nothing. But I'd come to work, you know, with a hat and the white gloves and, you know, perfect. And I was the secretary to this Mr. Walker. But this Mr. Lefebvre, he was there already for many years. He was uh, 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 through the First World War. So he was, I don't know, I didn't know about ages. And he was the man that introduced me to the arts, to the uh, ballets, to, uh, 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 what do you call it, the theater. He, he had been through the First World War. He was a big shaker, for one thing. He had, I don't know how many children, maybe four. And one of his sons, his name was Gilles Lefebvre, was a, is, I don't know if he's still alive now, but I think he was a violinist, a very well-known Canadian violinist. But I was innocent of everything. I didn't know a thing about anything. And this Mr. Lefebvre taught me everything. Mm. He taught me about music. He smoked a cigar that I hated and everything, but he introduced me to the arts. Hmm. And um, I had my tonsils out by Dr. Dickey. Do you remember yes. Dr. Dickey? Mm -hmm. And uh, like I was still at work, like I was working, and I told him I was having my tonsils out, and Dr. Dickey took my tonsils out, and I came home, and it didn't take long they sent me in a bouquet of red roses. But meanwhile, I started to hemorrhage. So my poor mother phoned, and Dr. Dickey came out, and if she wouldn't have come out, I wouldn't have been here. I wouldn't be here. Because I don't know what happened, but, but this Mr. Lefebvre, he was a real <laughs> ugly, like you wouldn't believe, but he had the, the, the uh, what do you call it, um, the French charm. Yes. And he he opened my eyes. And I can remember we used to, he would go to the um, Capitol Theater. I saw Lily Pons, all the famous people and all the artists. And it was he who introduced me to all that to Wasn't this day. Wasn't that marvelous? Wasn't that marvelous? And I think I even had him at home because you know what? You know, I mean, you looked at Goy, and Goy was like, a, you know, they were like second because I was raised with such, um, uh, hate, not hatred, but it was, in that country, you, you just hated them, whether you knew them, you didn't know them, it was ingrained in you to hate Goya. And this man, he was a charmer, but ugly, he looked like a, uh, but to this day, and I think of him quite a lot, and then when I got sick, they sent me the flowers, this man, I'll never forget him because of the fact that I, I'm thankful to him because my mother sure couldn't introduce me no. <laughs> to Lily Pons or to anybody else. My father, forget it. He didn't even read a paper. So, and I had, I loved, you know, he used to work there. Uh, he didn't work there, but when he'd come in, I, I think he's gone now. Do you remember Goody uh, Mazur? Yes, Gordon Mazur. So he sort of, he and I sort of were sort of close uh, as because of the, uh, uh, you know, uh, what was going on at the Tama Tour and stuff. Yes. So we always, and he was with, sort of with Percy at some stage in life. And uh, so he used to come around a lot, but then he joined the Air Force mm -hmm. and he became, I think, a flight lieutenant. Mm -hmm. So when he would come into town, he always came up to the office and but this Mr. Lefebvre, I don't know if I wouldn't have met. And then there was another, beside him, there was also, in those days, the government took anybody and everybody because of her poor time. So there was a girl named Elsie Newman who came from out west. She was, um, she, she was, an, in those days, I guess you'd call her an old maid. But she, too, was very well 
educated in music and art and all that. And we'd, the two of us, would I used to have her to the house and everything. And that's how I, you know what, For if I hadn't met those two people, I don't know if I'd appreciate all that, unless I would have gone to school for it. I see. But it was, and Mr. Lafayette used to tell us stories of what went on during his, his war, you know, the First, <laughs> yes, world, the first war. world War. So I really, you know, and I had no prejudice about anybody mm -hmm. or anything, mm -hmm. and I had no fears. Mm -hmm. When you're a kid, well, not a kid, I was already, you know, in my late teens, but it just that I, I had no malice. Mm -hmm. like, you, you don't have, I didn't have it ingrained in, the only thing I did have was my brain ingrained to, to hate the, 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 the going, you know. But once you, you, as you're growing up and the world becomes a little bit bigger in the ride, you don't, you don't think that way. Mm -hmm. So that, they all, they really did. That, those uh, years that I was working there, it was also the way my boss treated me. It was um, was different from what you had experienced till now. Yes, absolutely. And I'm thankful to them. And uh, to this day, I think I still think of them. I have pictures of these people in my album. And uh, Elsie was never an old maid. Like you know, she never. Something must have happened in her life that she never. We got married, and whenever you mentioned something about men, she always had a derogatory mm -hmm. thing to say about yeah. them. And, and where did you meet your husband, Larry? Oh, God. that was in York Street School. In York Street School? He, he was limping with hockey sticks all over. He was, had a hockey stick. I can just see him. He had a helmet on. And he was lame, and he was on skates in the hallway for Stastemer. <laughs> and he hit me over the head with a stick. <laughs> that was an introduction. And that was the introduction. <laughs> Had I known then, I would have hit him back. <laughs> oh, it's well, that you, 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 you've stayed together for a long time Thank to not God. hit him back. <laughs> so kid, you were married, I believe, in, in 1945. Oh my, <laughs> that's a long be, time. We're going to be married. Um, we're married 40 uh, in 45. We're married 58 years. Two more years, and we'll be 60. In fact, friends of mine just I spoke to her, the Wieners. Yes. Do you know her, uh, Miriam Mandler? Yes. They, uh, last Friday, they were married 60 years. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that something? Yes. I'm yes. hoping that we live <laughs> to do it. And, and I believe you have three children. Right. Jeff. Two boys and a girl. Wayne and Shelley. And they're all married yeah. also. Jeff, Wayne, and Shelley. Yes. Yeah. And they're all married, and some of them are here in Ottawa, and some yeah. are No, I just have Wayne is in Toronto, and yes. Jeff and Shelley live in Ottawa. Uh -huh. And they have, Jeff has a daughter. Uh -huh. And uh, Shelley has two uh, boys, oh, gorgeous right. kids, yeah. Mm -hmm. And Wayne has two sons in Toronto. Mm -hmm. And uh, what else you want? Well, what kind of, uh, the synagogue, uh, the synagogue oh, you went yeah, to was? Well, uh, when we first came here, my father belonged to uh, both synagogues, Murray Street and Rideau Street. Uh -huh. In those days, that was the same, you know, that show was uh, Rideau Street. And if you were, uh, uh, my husband, his family belonged to um, King Edward because that was, you know, the upper crust school. But um, my father used to down uh, twice a day. He was very religious. So that uh, so in Murray, the morning, Murray was closer. So in the mornings, especially be before he'd go up in the country, he would have, if he'd go to Murray Street. Mm -hmm. And in those days, all the people congregated there during the week. Sure. But for Shabbos, Go. We'd go to Rito and we'd go. Mm -hmm. we, and I'd go to sh we went to Shul, but then it got a chore and then we'd have to he'd fight over it. And, you know, I mean, it's our upbringing was forced on us. Like our, uh, our religion was forced on us. Mm -hmm. So I thought if I did something on a Saturday that I shouldn't be doing, I would be struck dead. That's how we were raised, because we were raised with fear of our religion. We right. weren't explained. But Mr. Gordon of Shalom came to the house, and he was to uh, teach us a lot. And in, in Kamai, in the old country, we were, it was second language. So, I mean, we were taught everything pertaining to our religion, 
and in our home we carried it out because we're, we, we, my father was so religious. But then we smartened up. <laughs> you, 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 you began to make your own decisions. Is that what That's happened? That's right. That's what happened. You, sure. you, you didn't just believe everything that you were told. Some, yeah, but I did believe it when I was younger because mm -hmm. I thought, you know, if I did something on a Shabbos that I you weren't allowed, I figured I'd be struck dead right there. Mm -hmm. But it was, and it, it, were, it really affected me. Yes. Um, you see, it wasn't taught. Religion in our house was uh, uh, not taught in the proper way of loving it. Mm -hmm. It was forced on us, and that's why I think my brothers too. They, they uh, I mean, well, kosher and things like that that I we believe in, but basically it was forced on us because our father was so um, dogmatic about his religion. Mm -hmm. My mother became not my mother wasn't that religious after many years after we lived here and uh, she carried on because of but my god on a Saturday morning if you weren't ready to go to a show you know there was a big mm -hmm. so uh, but I still love our religion and I do as much as I can to keep it yes I'm not a Robertson mm -hmm. but I still maintain uh, certain cautious and all that I still keep it yes. my sister too mm -hmm. And uh, Maxie and his house, I think, yeah, they do pretty well. Maxie really doesn't believe in it, but uh, it, we keep kosher, modern kosher, that's yeah, all. Right. But I never eat trade, no meats, no, and I am very careful with yes. food anyway, so that I wouldn't do any, uh, any restaurant, I wouldn't go just to any restaurant if we eat out, and if we do, I only have uh, milk. Yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And synagogue, actually, I enjoyed the first year that we came here. I enjoyed the, the people that conduct the services. I can't remember their names, but some of the Hazanim were out of this world. And then when they built Beshalom, oh, it was like heaven. Because the shul in the old country, oh, jeez, <laughs> when I think of it, I was a little kid. The shul downstairs was for men only no women. And upstairs, they had a balcony, and they had panels, like openings, so that the, the women sat, and they could, the men could only see the top of their heads. For Lilla, they should see their faces. But I remember being a little kid, I would climb on one of the <laughs> ladders, and I'd lean over to see what's doing down by the men. <laughs> I see it in front of me now. My sister, she won't even listen to me when I talk about all that. And I nearly <laughs> fell, over. fell over. Somebody <laughs> grabbed me. I was a little kid. What did I know? <laughs> you almost landed in the men's section. <laughs> in the, right where they read they learned the Torah? I would have fallen on that. <laughs> now, I want to tell you, but you know, it's funny how life is. What's ingrained in you. I would have loved for my children to be religious. They all went to the day school and everything, but my wing, the middle one, his has two boys. His son, the oldest one, was bar mitzvah two or three years ago already. The shul where he had that child's bar mitzvah was identical to the one that I was raised in Kamal. <laughs> Is that right? You know what? It's the same type of shul. The men are downstairs. It's a little shul. Larry would know where it is. And they have in the middle, like Murray Street. Yes. And then upstairs. The bim in the middle. Yes. The bim. And there's a the <coughs> rabbi. They don't have services every day there. But the rabbi they have there is very extremely religious, and I think he is married to Rivers, a daughter. Oh, is that right? Irving Rivers, a daughter. Is that right? Yeah, I'm sure of it. Oh. Yeah. So I think she has quite a few children, and they had the bar mitzvah, and it was like the bar mitzvahs in Murray Street Shul. Is that right? And we're having an, uh, the second son. Please God, he's going to be bar mitzvah this. I think it's either this uh, spring or next spring, and they're having it there too. Oh, it was, you know, when I walked in there, I couldn't believe it. 
that shul. And Wayne, he thinks there's no other shul like that one because to him, it, it, it um, because I told him about our shul, like when I grew up, and he just thinks that that shul and the, the rabbi there, I think it's Elsa Rivers' husband. I see. And a very firm and a lovely man, young man. So, uh, and look, you have stories the same as mine. Like, you know, we all have stories, only they're right. in different That's chapters. Right. That's right. Most of Well, I certainly want to thank you very much for taking the time to give us all this history so that we can keep it for our records in Ottawa Jewish Archives. And so to, this is Sylvia Badovsky Kirschman saying thank you to Yetta Weinstein Aaron mm -hmm. for all her remarks and her time. Thank you. Oh.